Well, good morning, friends. Good morning, saints, on this Thursday morning. Um, yeah, heavily overcast and uh, lightly snowing again. And uh, weather-wise, I think, yeah, we're at uh, minus 20 still right now. Feels like minus 20-something, uh, a little colder than that. But uh, yeah, here we are. You can hear that snow crunching under my feet because it's cold. I'm actually surprised that it's snowing at minus 20. Usually, uh, snow falls at like minus 4, minus 5. Maybe up to minus 8 or something like that. But it's minus 20. And it's uh, snowing. We've got uh, ground covered. Vehicles covered, and uh, yeah, here we are. And uh, this is like, I think I'm going to rename this uh, little series right now to uh, Walk to the Snowbank <laughs> because it's a, a big snowbank here to try to get through to get down to the river. Um, so uh, you can see my footprints, I have done it a couple times. Uh, you can if you look down, oh, hang on, wrong, wrong way. You can see my footprints there. I've done it before, but it's a lot of work. And uh, yeah, I think we can, you know what? Let's go for it real quick. Uh, I'm gonna try. There we go, okay. Okay, so I am going to, today, as far as the word, we're gonna go to the book of Revelation. Uh, I know we haven't got there yet in our read through the Bible in a year, but uh, the verse that uh, I came across in some of my other studying, and uh, I know that uh, Pastor Ewan is going to be starting a series soon on the book of Revelation, so uh, yeah, this is going to get interesting. Anyways, chapter 3. Uh, this is part of the letters to the churches, and uh, particularly the one I'm looking at is Laodicea. And not that I feel in any way that uh, Church on the Hill is a Laodicean church. I think that the, uh, the messages to the seven churches are messages to probably all of us. Maybe at different stages in our walk, different seasons in our walk. Some people have suggested they are the different eras in church history where the church has, uh, you know, gone through different seasons as a uh, global universal body. Whatever it is, this is the voice of the Spirit speaking to believers, letters written to the churches, right? Uh, speaking to believers. And so I think it's prudent of us to listen and to ask the Spirit, is this a story or a message for me today? Where do I fit in with this right now? And if it's appropriate, then I need to respond. If this is something that the Spirit is convicting me of or prodding me in, then uh, I better be ready to uh, respond now. So I'm going to throw this out and I need to ask you to do that. If this is a word for you personally, then uh, you need to deal with that. If this is a word for somebody that you know, uh, maybe you need to compassionately, not judgmentally, compassionately share it with them. Um, as I'm going to try to do now, I'm trying not to be judgmental here. I want to actually do this and I've been praying that I would do this in love and compassion. Here's the thing, Revelation chapter 3 and uh, the message to the church in Laodicea. Basically the core of the message is, listen people, you've become complacent. You've become a word that I don't even know if it even exists in English, lackadaisical. Uh, you've kind of become lazy in your faith. 
Uh, I would suggest that maybe somebody of this sort would be the one who would, you know, either come to church or watch the live stream probably every week. But that's as far as their spirituality goes. That's as far as their relationship with God goes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, they don't serve anybody. They don't probably don't pray a whole lot. They probably don't read a whole lot of the Bible. They just kind of, they're coasting. All right. That's the story of Laodicea. They're just Christian coasters. Uh, if that makes any sense. All right. Uh, okay. So here's the message. To those who are coasting, this is the message from the Spirit of God to those who are just coasting along in their Christian experience. I don't even know if I can call it Christian faith. In their Christian experience, for those who are just coasting, here is the message of the Spirit to you. Listen to this. Verse 20. Here I am. Ahem. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. You see, see what's happening here? This is a message to believers. This contact, this is not a, you know, a non-Christian, hey, 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 I'm knocking on your heart's door and I want to come. That's, that's not the story here. Look at the context. This is written to the church, to coasting believers. To lukewarm. I think it's awesome. Awesome. That the Spirit wants to further deepen, enrichen your relationship with them. Do you get that? They, the Spirit, Father, Son, standing at the door asking to come back into your life to come in and to, to sit with you to eat with you that in the in the Hebrew context was the the richest experience that you could share with somebody to have them come and sit at your table and eat with you in fact there's a scripture that says that if there's a believer who is living in sin and knows that they're living in sin and you know it, and they won't repent of it, then don't even sit at the table and eat with them. That talks about a, a richness of relationship. Don't have it with the believer who is living in sin. But here, the Spirit of God is asking, please, they, can you see this? The Spirit is initiating it. The Spirit is the one who's knocking on the door. Asking to come in, to come into relationship with you, to come into richness of relationship with you, if you hear his voice. <coughs> there are people who are no longer listening. Yes, there are. There are people who are no longer listening to the voice of the Spirit. That's a sad comment. But if you hear his voice today, open the door and he will come in and eat with you and you with him talk about a beautiful relationship talk about a beautiful wow he's initiated this wow let's pray father thank you so much for being merciful thank you for being gracious thank you for knocking And I do pray, O oh God, for everybody that hears your voice today. Whatever level, I don't even know if that's the right word, but whatever level of relationship we're at with you, O oh God, that Father, today we can hear your voice, we can respond, and you come in and deepen that relationship. Wherever we're at, Lord, you deepen that relationship. You take it to the next level. Thank you for wanting to be in relationship with us. Thank you for redeeming. Thank you for calling. Thank you, O oh God, that you are the one initiating this relationship response. And so, Father, we gladly, we gladly open our doors. We open our hearts. We open our minds. 
And we don't just invite you to come in. We ask you, O oh God. We ask you to come in and to eat with us, to sit with us, that we might be able to know you more. Let this happen today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you richly. This Sunday at 1030, uh, we're going to be on online one more time. Uh, hopefully this will be the last. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we will definitely be online this Sunday. So join us right here on YouTube. Uh, online live at 1030. God bless you. Hey, call me if you need anything. Hey? Call me if you need anything. God bless you. Cheers.